Hello. 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 And welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dinger City Season 7 Bracketology video. Ooh. Today we are going to be discussing the bracket, what it looks like, what those seeds look like, and who we think is going to make it all the way to the top for me. You got Crit Nick, and you got City Hall right over here. I'm Mr. Joe, on my right. Crit Jam, baby. And on my left. Wonderberry HD, a.k.a. Tyler. Ooh, and we're going to be breaking down the playoff bracket for Season 7 of Dinger City, as well as giving our predictions as to what's going to happen, and some win probabilities that we had thrown together by an ELO system that was done by club member Little Coax. Shout out to Little Coax. We love you, buddy. Love that guy. So now, these aren't exact numbers since the ELO was done after the fact but it is a pretty good representation of what round one of the playoffs might look like. So without further ado, why don't we get into that? And uh, let's take a look at those final standings, Andrew. Well, surprising no one, we have Dennis at top, 35 and five, huge. Then we have followed it up by Gil, Joey not too far behind, Maddie not too far behind him. Then kind of the, the next step over, we have Nick, Tyler, Lionel, then me, topping off the top eight. And uh, you want to read the bottom nine? Oh, so bad. So bottom, then we got uh, Jason who missed, fucking missed top eight by a hair, 39 and 30. And then uh, young upstart Joe Stimmel, Baby Hall, 22 and 19. Then we got Tommy at 11th, 22, 21. 12th is Cokes, 15 and 16. 13 is Dan, 12 and 43. 14 Spencer, 13 and 52. <laughs> 15 is Billy. It's a, two. it's a lot. 15 is Billy, 2 and 24. And 16 is poor boy Nolan, 0 oh, and 22. All right, guys. So our first matchup is Tyler versus Tommy, with uh, Tyler in favor to win this game 72.9%. Their head to head this season is 4 to 1 in favor of Tyler. So. This is the most interesting game in the bracket, I think. While Tyler is favored at 72.9% to win, I think whoever takes game one is winning the entire thing. And I think if it's Tommy, I think he's going to be calm. It's going to be cool. He's going to be collected. And I think he's going to take it. But ultimately, I think Tyler will win this matchup. And that's my take. Tyler, why don't you tell us? Well, the man himself. I think Dennis is on to some things and <laughs> off on others. Like, for instance, when he said I was going to win the whole thing, I think that's uh, that's spot on. Um, but for that part where, like, I might not win the whole thing, I think he's totally dead in the water. Uh, Tommy hasn't beaten me in months. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely what I was thinking, too. Lately, Tyler has had Tommy's number pretty hard. I mean, you could see a 4-1 to one record in favor of Tyler, and I'm pretty sure at least three of those are in a row. I'm not entirely sure. We'd have to go back and check, but it really just feels like this is Tyler's set to lose. But Tommy, you know what? Maybe he could pull it out. I, I could see it, but again, the 72.9% in favor of Tyler feels about right. He did beat me last playoffs. Oh, yeah, that's this true. exact starting matchup. This is a rematch. Mm -hmm. Wow. Not again, brother. <laughs> not again. So honestly, 72.9% sounds kind of embarrassing, but I think that Tommy and Tyler is way more of a 50-50 than you think. Yeah, I thought they were closer. Yeah, because even though even though Tommy wound up falling like pretty far down in the seeds, he is a good player and he takes games off of random, like really good people. Like I'm not saying I'm really good, but he beats me sometimes. He beat Dennis that one game. He beats he beats a he beats a lot of the higher seeds often. Yeah, I will say for Tyler though, I believe he is four and one against Tommy. Yes, yes, he is. So he's got an impressive record against him. You know, they're uh, classic rivalry a bit, but uh, Tyler's edged out in both seed win percentage, ELO, and win percentage against Tommy. Yeah, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see it. I mean, I'm pretty sure Tommy got him last season, so unless I'm fucking wrong. No, Tommy got him last season. Yeah, totally. All right, excited so, to see it. It'll be a good one. I'm excited to see it, too. So next up is Joey versus Dan. Joey's in favor to win this one, 96.9%. And their head-to-head -head this season is Joey 7, Dan 0. Okay, well, this is a really interesting matchup because obviously we haven't seen Dan beat Joey yet. 
but I feel every time they match up, he gets just a little bit closer and a little bit closer. So while I'm confident that my boy Joey ain't going to get knocked out round one, I do think we're going to get Dan's going to get his first win over Joey, making it a three game round. Okay. Okay. You know what? Uh, the the comment about Dan and me having very close games, very accurate. Most of the time me and Dan play, it's a one or two run game. It's in, in these seven games, I think the most recent, it was like a three run game, nothing crazy. And there was one time I kind of crushed him. But honestly, every game we play is pretty close. And that win over me is definitely creeping up. However, it's playoffs. I'm, I'm bunkering down. I'm, no meme picks. Dan's not going to stand a chance. I'm, I'm crushing him. 2-0, easy. I think with it being a series of best of three, I think the 97% chance is, is, is reasonable. Um, if it was best of one, I think it could be less than that. But yeah. with three games, even if Dan takes one, I just can't see my man Joey just falling off. I think Joey's going to get it. Thanks, bud. Be of pretty course. wacky for a fan favorite for... A lot of people are saying Joey's going to win the whole thing. It'd be pretty wacky if Dan knocks him out round one. That would be insane. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a wash. Like, I've seen Dan come really close to beating Joey, and uh, apparently he hasn't beaten him at all, but their games have been very close. And Dan's taken games off of players like me, so I think that he's got what it takes. Really? I, I've played Dan a few times, and I, uh, you know, Dan's not watching. Uh, I, I thought he was garbage. I didn't know he took games off of people like that. Yeah, yeah, he started to get way better as the season went on. Like, I'm not okay, talking okay. like, oh, top eight material or anything, but I think that he has a chance, a little bit more than the 96.9%. Yeah, not to go all the way, but he could definitely take a game I off. think a lot of the reasons you see some of these in the high 90s is because it's the two out of three format first round, and it's a lot harder to take two games out of three than it is to take one. Agreed. When you're, you know, it's, it's a compounding sort of... Thing. What's the next matchup? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Actually, I think that Dan could really uh, show him, show us what he's got. Yeah, it's always fun to hope for an upset. Absolutely. All right, guys, awesome. So our next head-to-head -head is Lionel <clears throat> versus Coax. Sixty-four point five percent in favor of Lionel, and they actually have a one-to-one head-to-head this season. Joey, what do you think? Yeah, I'm excited about this one. I think this is going to be, while Tyler Tommy might be like the set to watch for round one, I think this could really go either way because Lionel is a very, very good player and he's got the experience. And then, but Cox can really just like pull anything out. He's got the game knowledge. It's just all there. And not to say Lionel doesn't, but, but Cox is a very smart player. And as long as he's on his game, I think he can take Lionel easily. However, I think a lot of the times Cox. He he plays less than his like best ability. I really think he he has potential to do it easily, but I do think it should be favored Lionel because Cox might uh, he might choke. Little chokes. I think Lionel's going to take this series over Cox, but I think Cox has the ability to do better in the in the playoffs if he were to win. I think he matches up better to other players, maybe more so than Lionel. Just because Lionel has that baseball brain, and I think with you and with Gil as well on the same side of the bracket, I think Cox, because he's very, very analytical, I think he would have a better chance at going maybe to the finals. But I do think that Lionel will take Cox in this series. Very, very good. 64.5. Might be a little bit lower, but I do think that Lionel's going to take it. I think here we got a classic... Uh... Something I'd almost bet money on. This is going to be a three three game seat session here. And we have two players who love Bowser. And my my history with Coax is whenever he gets Bowser and I don't, he beats me. When I do, he loses. And I wonder if that's something that logic that's been like you could track it. Like if Coax is like w winning percent goes way up with Bowser on his team. Sure, we can check. So I think there's I don't want to say it's gonna narrow down to just this, but I think there is a world where Whoever just like wins that the, the so the higher higher seed picks home or first pick yes so I think per game one so I'm gonna say I, I'm giving the edge to Lionel I think Lionel just having the, the ability to be like I want first pick Bowser and then the second game Cox can do because he will have just lost but then the third game <laughs> yeah, Lionel back. will have just lost and it'll go back so that's my full prediction for what's gonna happen in that I round. can see that as well exactly yeah.
I I would say this number, the uh, the favor of sixty four point five. I would actually expect this to be a little bit higher for something like Lionel V. Coke seven seed versus twelve seed. Uh, I think Coke's is probably his elo is a little bit better reflecting of his seed. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I mean. This, honestly, even 64.5 for me personally, I feel like Lionel is definitely better than Cokes, but I don't feel like it's by that much. But then again, like the 7 through 12, those seeds were very contentious for win percentage. Like, you, without the ELO that we did for this, like, video, um, th those seeds were very contentious. And, yeah. like, I honestly, th this one, in my opinion, could go either way. I'd like to see Lionel get it just because I want to see Lionel climb, but... Yeah, I, I don't know who I want to win. I, I think I would be fine with either of them. It's a good game. <laughs> All right, guys. Our next matchup is Gil versus Nolan. Our two seed versus our 16 seed. This match is at 98.4% in favor of Gil taking it. And they did not play any games this season. They did not. Because Nolan doesn't come on any day but a Tuesday. So that's the highest number on the the second highest number on the list. Uh, should it be higher? I mean, Nolan has no wins. Uh, he, he's zero zero against Gil this season, but I don't think he's ever beaten Gil in the ever. game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if we account the world history of Mario Superstar Baseball, Nolan has never ever ever beaten Gil at all. So this, I'm not gonna say it's 100, percent but I think it's 98.4 because. No one's elo is probably kind of high just because higher than it should be at 0 and 22 just because he like only played like some people in like the top eight seeds pretty much mm -hmm. i you know i could see a world the uh you know the 1.6 percent dr strange odyssey where where gil kind of just like like throws on a funny like like he, he bunts with toad to, to throw the game and then like he like walks four of nolan's guys or something like it no no one's got a, a shot here it's but uh, it's come, Gil's game to lose. He no one's come close to beating a few of us, but like he just makes these bonehead throws sometimes. Not much on like you, but you make a lot <laughs> less of them. So we'll we'll just have to see how it goes. But uh, I think that Gil's probably gonna put him in the dirt. Yeah. So I definitely think the zero wins for Nolan is not fair. He has a rough schedule. He only comes on Tuesdays, and the people that come <laughs> are Tuesdays. Yeah are the people that you see here, the top seeds in the club. Exactly. And I think Gil will take it into. I don't think he's going to mercy Nolan. I think every game is going to be within six to eight runs. I think every game is going to go to the eighth or ninth inning. And I think the game will have a chance for Nolan, but he's going to do something, throw the ball to the wrong base, use two stars for no reason. I think Nolan's going to show up and really put on a good show. It's going to end in two. And I think just not getting mercy as a 16th seed, I think that's a good showing. I think that's what's going to happen. I personally would love to see Nolan get his, like, like a win in here. He's never beaten Gil, so it'd be kind of fun for him to be able yeah. to say he's done it. And you know what? Like, this is just, like, a, what my heart wants. I want Nolan to take one win away from Gil. But I agree. I think it's a pretty simple. This might be the easiest first round. It's probably the second easiest first round <laughs> to call. I think I'm going to give it uh, another, yeah, echo the sentiment, Gil, 2-0, Nolan. Yeah, I, I don't think there's too much to say here. Gil's going to take it into pretty handily. However, I would also not be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gil double mercy Nolan, but I've played Nolan a couple times. I didn't mercy him either time. He's a, he's a very solid player he if he had come more throughout the season and he came on thursdays he'd probably be maybe like 13 some, something like that he'd be a little probably around spencer and dan def, definitely around that range so he's a solid player i would be surprised if he took a game but it wouldn't be like the most mind-blowing thing of all time all right the next matchup nick at five huge at the 10th seed this one is actually in favor and is the only one to be in favor of the lower seed at 50.4% in favor of Huge with their 50-50 head-to-head matchup. Yeah, I just want to say that that number is a load of malarkey. <laughs> Huge's ELO is only so high because he beat Dennis this season. 
I don't need to beat Dennis this season for the season to know that I'm a better player than young upstart Joe Stimmel, a.k.a. Baby Hall. I'm fifth seed for a reason, and he's 10 seed for a reason. This is not an analysis. This is a fucking call out, Joe. You're going down. Yeah, man, Nick sucks at the game. My boy Huge is going to put him in the dirt. Uh, trained Huge personally. He's He's got tons of potential, and he's awakened it already. Uh, I know Nick. He's garbage. I, I've played him before. Uh, this is the closest in percentage, 50.4. is just about as 50-50 as it gets. But uh, I I know Nick, and I, I know Huge, and I can already see his his smiling face when he comes back here after his swift 2-0, and, and he calls you free. You know, I was worried, or no, I was not worried because he left his GameCube here, and the next time we're playing is for the preliminaries. But I get a text today being like, hey, can I come pick up my GameCube? I was like, oh, no, he's going to practice. Going to the dojo. And he made sure the game was in the cube and everything. Like, ah, man, I should have made like a decoy game or something. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's interesting because... Whenever I play Huge, um, I always claim that I think I know what makes him tick because City Hall trained him. Yeah. But every time I say that, he goes, City Hall barely trained me. I'm better than that guy. <laughs> That's not a joke. He says that every time. So it could go either way. I don't think these players' styles clash the same way that Lionel and Coax do, whereas like whoever gets Bowser has the clear advantage in that matchup. I think these guys could draft whatever teams they may draft, and it's really going to be a 50-50 split. I'm calling three games here. Huge goes over. I think that's that's a great point. I don't think they play too similarly. Huge has kind of a weird draft style. He likes the weird pitchers. He likes green dry bones a lot to pitch. Um, it's interesting that Huge is actually favored here, considering he's the lower seed, and they're you know they have the one to one head to head. That's really just because Huge has a win over Dennis. He's got maybe a win over Gil, I'm not sure, but he's he's got a win over Dennis, which is it carries a lot of weight in the ELO discussion, which is why he got that edge over Nick. But honestly, I think when it comes down to it, Nick's probably going to take this one two to one, but I think it'll be a very, very good series. I mean, no disrespect whatsoever when I say this. I think Nick is the second best player in the world at this game. I think he's the most consistent out of almost anyone in the club, I think when he's on his game, no one can almost beat him. And I think that for Nick, he has to not give in to the pressure. He has to sit back and dial in. When he's on, he's on, and no one can touch him. I am a Nick fanboy. Go Nick. Do you want to do the real one, though? I didn't think the... <laughs> I didn't... Yeah, fuck Nick. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I didn't think the disrespect was going to be uh, towards us. <laughs> yeah, right? Wow. All right, that's a hot take. Good, good for you, Nick. Second best in the world. <laughs> Next matchup, Maddie versus Spencer. This one is actually 92.6% in favor of Maddie. Not surprising as he has a 2-0 head-to-head record against Spencer. And here it looks like we have our third wash of the, uh, the playoffs. Uh, I've got a lot of dirge to record. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we've, uh, you know, I mean... Long story short, I, I think Maddie's going to win. Spencer's got a chance, but it's a low one. Yeah, I mean, listen. Oh, once again, I think that the percentages that are really high, like this one, can go down a little bit. Like, I think that Maddie will clear through Spencer, but I wouldn't give Spencer the benefit of the doubt here. Or I would, actually. <laughs> That's how the phrase works. I would definitely consider Spencer at least coming close. I, I have faith in my boy. Yeah, I don't think he's going to put up an embarrassing performance. But we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, so um, I think this is going to be a slaughter. And I don't know if that's a hot take. Because Spencer is a good player. He, I mean, he's taken a couple games off me. He's taken a couple off you, right? He's taken yeah. a couple off, uh, one off you, a few Two. off Jason. Either way. A couple off Nick. I mean, he, he has good wins. Maddie is a noob slayer through and through. Anytime he plays Dan, it's a massacre. Play Spencer, it's pretty tough. I just, I, there's no way I can see Spencer taking this series, as, let alone a game, honestly. Yeah, it's a best of three. Again, if it was a best of one, maybe the 92.6 would make sense. Maddie's just too good at hitting. Spencer's strength is in the pitching, and Maddie is going to put up runs no matter who he plays. 
And I think Spencer's really going to have to hit. And the problem is, is that Maddie's just a better hitter. Maddie's going to put up seven runs a game. I think he mercies one game. I think he maybe goes eight to one in the second game. It's going to be a two series, 2-0. Yeah. Um, good luck, Spencer. I hate to echo my sentiment from the, the Nolan Gill game, but it's very similar. I, I would love to see Spencer take a win off Maddie's because I think it would be big character development for Spencer going yes. into season eight. But uh, I think it's it's a I think it's a very safe uh, win for Maddie two zero. I'd love to see it be two one. Hell, I'd love to see Spencer win. Yeah. But yeah. I think we got a Maddie two zero on our hands. Agreed. Agreed. Do you think he has just as much of a chance to take one game off of him like Jason did last season? Oh, oh man, that would be awesome. I would die to watch Spencer take a game off Maddie. Yeah. Tilt, tilt him real nice. Mm. In the regular season, we like to kind of avoid these like stomp games. So I'm excited for playoffs because we get to see multiple, you know, two out of three games of like top dog versus bottom dog. And it's it's going to be really cool to see like how they perform, how much of a gap really is there, you know? Hell yeah. Do you guys think there's a chance that Jason, like it like Jason's last game against Maddie in the World Series. Do you think that there's a chance that uh, Spencer takes a game off Maddie? In the semifinals, like mean, Jason did, whatever Jason's quarterfinals, yeah, uh, a chance, yeah, maybe that uh, seven point four percent, but <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. I, I, no, no, no disrespect to Spencer at all. He's a great player, but um, I don't see it. We aren't having a five week break. I think while it was fun to see the upsets last year, the five week break really did do numbers to the consistency to throw off their rhythm. And Maddie has still been playing enough. And I don't think Spencer was on the same level as Jason was last season when Jason was able to take a game off of Maddie. I think if Spencer does it, it'll be the first game. I don't see him winning anything past that, though. He might be able to get Maddie as in like, oh, I just sat down to play my first game of the day. But uh, I think that's the only shot he's got at getting a game off of him. Yeah. Sorry, Spencer. No disrespect to Spencer. Love but you know he's going to pick Waluigi, and that right there is going to be why. Waluigi's all right. He can't not all right enough to beat Maddie in the playoffs. <laughs> that is that is a good point. He can't be messing around in the playoffs. Yeah. And speaking of Jason, next up is Andrew versus Jason, the 8 and 9 seed, with the uh, in-favor winning percentage being to Andrew with 66.5%, and their head-to-head -head this season being five wins to Andrew versus two to Jason. Really? Yeah. You know, it's really funny that you said five wins to Andrew, two wins to Jason, because I was about to say how, like, Jason bodies me all the time. I guess that was just, like, a lie that I told to myself. Um, but, yeah, seeing the 66.5, I was actually really surprised when I saw this number because, I, I mean, obviously we're right next to each other in the seedings. I consider ourselves to be, like, pretty equal. Uh, and if anything, just my lack of confidence, I, I would give this one to Jason. Uh, in, a, in a two out of three set, Maybe that gives me a slight advantage, honestly. Uh, I think I'm more prone to throwing a particular game than being genuinely bad at the game on the whole. <laughs> so maybe, you know, I could throw one win too. No, I think that you're going to get absolutely fucking pub stomped in this game. It's going to be pretty embarrassing. I train Jason myself. <laughs> he watches all the uploads on my YouTube channel, uh, Mario Superstar Baseball Club, or, uh, yeah, Dinger City now? Yeah, so <laughs> it was Mario Superstar Baseball at the time of recording this. Yeah, so I I think that uh I think that this one's gonna be a lot closer than sixty six point five, uh and in best two out of three we just got to see who adjusts better. I don't think he's gonna walk my Bowser, and I think he's gonna lose. You don't pick Bowser, you pick Birdo. I think that this is gonna be a best of two. I think whoever wins the first game is winning the second game. I think if Andrew could start hitting really early, Andrew's really good at picking up patterns, I think he'll take the second game as well because I don't know if Jason's going to be able to adjust as quickly as maybe he's going to have to. Andrew's good at hitting. Jason's good at pitching. And I think hitting almost always prevails when it's a three-game series. And I think Jason is fantastic. Jason is someone I don't want to play. I'm hoping Andrew moves on. But I think Andrew's going to. I think he's going to win it in two. Well, I think this is probably alongside your Lionel Cokes and your Nick Huge in it definitely could go either way. 
but I think it is the least so of that three. I think uh, I think Andrew's experience is just going to take him the little extra feed it needs to. That being said, Jason is the kind of guy who will study the tape and practice, and I wouldn't be shocked if he comes in with a game plan and just crushes Andrew. It totally could happen, but Andrew could also crush him. Andrew is the most flip-floppy one day he yeah. could beat God, the other day he's losing to a snail. Like, it's just how he is. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. It's If Andrew, if Jason catches Andrew on an off day, I don't think there's much of a contest. I think, because Jason's a pretty consistent player, I'm going to make him a fat dinner right before we play. So oh, dude, he no, better eat. No hunger points for Jason. He's going to be he's gonna be belly full. And if, if he catches Andrew on maybe a slightly off day, I think he will handily take it. Otherwise, I think it'll be a close series. And you know what? It's not like Andrew crushes Jason every time they play. Jason's gotten a couple wins. Who's to say he doesn't get a couple more now? And finally, our one seed versus our 15 seed, Dennis versus Billy, with a 99.999999 repeating percentage of winning to Dennis. They have a 2-0 and record in favor of Dennis. So what's that hockey movie where they win when they really like shouldn't have? It was like a real, is it Miracle on Ice? Is that the movie? <laughs> I'm pretty that sure is that's not going to be this. The 99.9. The <laughs> sure. This is going to be a fucking stomp. And I'm excited to see the blood, baby. I want Billy to put something up. I want it so fucking bad, but he doesn't train. He only coaches. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be ready. Yeah, we we saw uh, Billy. What was I gonna? I, I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, total trounce. Uh, the you know the I mentioned Doctor Strange before the the uh, the one in ten thousand universe thing. Uh, t- two out of three is is just not gonna happen. Uh, Billy Billy's not like total garbage at the game or anything, right? Like like it, you're familiar familiar with the infinite monkeys on infinite typewriter things. I think if we had infinite Billies. And infinite Dennis's and infinite setups. One of the Billies might take like one game. I don't think any of them are winning the series. <laughs> yeah, I think I agree with that entirely. What do you want? A funny joke where I say, <laughs> I say Billy might win a game. He's not. This is Dennis 2 0. I'm going to go even further. Billy will not put up one run the whole series. Um, I mean, yeah, this is going to be, it's going to be a pretty handy, handy. I don't know. It'll be an easy victory for Dennis. They did make a previous bet where any run that Billy scores during the series, Dennis will have to immediately chug a beer. Zero beers will be chugged. I think there may be one beer, but it'll, it'll be, be like, for fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's just this isn't going to be close. This is going to this I mean this is the most one-sided matchup in Mario baseball. I'm going to say in baseball history. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely possible. So, I mean, easy 2-0. I love Billy very, very much. It was, it wasn't even a bet. It was, hey, Bill, if you score a run, I'm chugging a beer. And Billy's like, let's go. And uh, yeah, I'm going to show my dominance as to why I'm the best player to ever pick up a controller. I'm going to mercy him in two games and less than the sixth inning in both. He will not score a single run unless it is a Birdo ball. He will not score a run. You heard it here first. Let's get yeah, it. Dennis is fucking styling on the, <laughs> like the bottom player. <laughs> Jake <laughs> Paul, all the balls. <laughs> Dennis, have fighter. you considered just drafting Birdo early so he can't score a run? No, I'll give him Birdo. You just want to drink wow. a beer. He just wants a beer or two. You know you can drink them without giving up any runs, right? <laughs> all right, guys. And now, who do you think is actually going to end up taking it all? Well, I, I've long since been holding the... Let me restart that. I've long held the opinion that I think Joey is going to win. I think, he, you know, obviously Dennis is the, the sane pick, but Joey has the heart. He has the knowledge. He never throws. He, he's, cra- you know, crazy consistent with that. He's, on, he's up there in the seeds, you know. He, he's like the shadow, like four to two. He's always around there. And I think he just has like... He, he can't get tilted, you know? I've never seen Joey mad at the game, as opposed to all the people above him, Denny Mattis Gill. Uh, Gill doesn't get mad so much, but, you know, Gill's a little prone to, to goofing off. I, I think Joey is the most 
ready to be dialed in with his heart and his soul, as opposed to other players who might just put in one or the other. Well, Andrew, your choice for winning is actually at the 10.5% mark in ch- in chances of winning the World Series. It's pretty good. It, it's higher than mine. It's it's higher than a lot of people's. I, I, what does that put him at? Uh, in the It does put him at third. Third. It's not bad. You know, I didn't get to say this because Mike didn't let me intro the segment, but welcome back to the cool side of the video. Anyway, I... I think I'm going to take it all. I'm pretty confident. I've been playing really well lately. I've been playing really well all season, and I can beat everyone on my side of the bracket for sure. I mean, no no, no doubts about it. I always fumble against Gil for some reason, but that's not going to happen again if Gil even makes it to face me. Uh, but, you know, if I didn't have to be selfish and choose myself, it's going to be Dennis. I mean, he uh, he's the person I'd expect to face in the World Series. He's the person everyone expects to face in the World Series, and uh, it's just, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure that it'll be me versus Dennis. So, so my pick for winning the World Series, I, I mean, it's more of a like I want to see it, and I think that he, this man, can adjust really well and actually wind up taking the whole thing. He's on the opposite side of the bracket of Dennis, which in my head, it's always just like, okay, so it's Dennis versus who, which isn't fair necessarily because last season it was not Dennis versus it was Andrew and Gill, but. I have a lot of faith in Lionel. I want to see Lionel go all the way, baby. Who do I think is actually going to win? Probably fucking Dennis, whatever. But I think that we could get a Dennis versus Lionel World Series, and it could be one hell of a fucking set. Well, Lionel is actually at fourth with 7.8% to win this, with Dennis being at 45.8%. To win the entire thing. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Let, less than a 50-50 shot for Dennis. This is slightly surprising. You know, we, we always make it out Dennis versus who. Dennis wins, but what if there's an upset? But, I mean, chances are he won't win. It'll be someone else. True. All right. So, I think there's there's two camps of thought here. There's the, there's the overpopulated, gross, ugly camp of... I just want to be right, so I'm picking Dennis. But then there is the camp of Lionel. I think that there is a chance that in these last few weeks, Lionel has checked just enough boxes, played just enough games, that he can reach deep into that season one Lionel bring it back and go all the way. I would not be shocked to see him win the whole thing. I think he has it in him to beat Dennis. I think he has it in him to beat Maddie. I think he has it in him to beat Gil. I don't think he has to worry about beating Maddie. I think that can happen. Well, I guess it could happen in the finals, but it would have to be finals. Yeah. I just think, I think that Lionel, uh, this is a little early, but I'm going to do it anyway. If not, this world series will be in season eight's world series. I think that's a fair take. Yeah. Lionel's definitely, he's back. For sure. He, he's it was yeah. it was shocking. Week one, I was like, oh this guy this guy's old. And then the second week he came, I was like, oh yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was crushing it. <laughs> Took one week for him to adjust. The madman. Yeah, right, insane. Right. So who do I have winning the World Series? Well, first, if it's not me, I think Joey's gonna win it. He's on the other side of the bracket. I think he plays really well against almost everyone. And if I'm not there, I do think he's gonna win it all. Now that being said. I'm winning it all. I'm not going to fluff it. I'm not going to drop a single game this entire playoffs. Not one game. I'm going to dominate. And the only way I will be out of the playoffs is if I lose second round. If any series, now granted, that already contradicts what I said. I'm not dropping a game. But you will see me in the World Series, and I would not have dropped a single game. But hypothetically... If you were to drop a game, it would be in the, the best of threes. The best of three, the second round. So best of three, I think uh, your projection is Andrew or Jason. Can I just say I, I, think, Andrew it's, dub. I think it's possible. I, I, oh, 100%. I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to discount Dennis here. I think there is a world where jet lagged, Disney ridden Dennis <laughs> is back Jacarnio's a distraction. All the beers and Mai Tais from Disney are still in the system. And oops, Andrew two owes them. Yeah, night shift Andrew just comes yeah. in. Yeah, like, like Andrew. Just, down Andrew on one of his good days. Yeah. 
Andrew's like, I got work in three hours. Let's make this quick. But yeah, I think if Dennis, if Dennis sniffs the semis, then Dennis is sniffing gold for yeah. sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm coming in hot. And um, you're always coming in hot, baby. Thank you. Usually coming in the street, am I right? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am. But uh, I think it's going to be a really fun series. And I wish everyone the best of luck. All I know is, is I didn't have the belt last season. I currently have it right now going into the playoffs. True. And I'm not giving it up for anything. And I'm going to show my dominance. And anyone who's watching this on TikTok, YouTube, challenge me. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you guys so fucking much. And we are super excited to start these playoffs, baby. This is the most loaded bracket that we've ever had on camera. I'm so excited for you guys to see every single goddamn game of these playoff series. Hype! Get hype! I'm hype. I'm hype. I'm hype. And here are our patrons. Oh my God, look at all these cards. You should sign up for a patron. You get a bunch of benefits. Link is down below. Oh, you could be on the screen right now. You could have. Oh man, maybe in the future if you're feeling it. Join the Discord. Like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell, become a patron, support our channel. If you're watching this right now, you're already liking what we're doing. So please support us. We love you and thank you guys so much for everything that you do over the last year. We've done great things and we hope to continuously do it.